President Bio, thank you for being with us today at the Forbes studio here in New York City on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly. I'm delighted you could join us. Thank you. So I listened to your talk earlier this week and your statement as a nation, national leader uh, to the United Nations. The first and most significant question I have for you is you've proposed some substantial changes to the nature of the Security Council at the UN to make sure that there's greater representation for the continent of Africa and African nations. Tell me about your proposal and why this is so important. Well, the United Nations is going to be 80 soon. And the architecture of the United Nations itself was done when most of Africa were under colonial rule. We were not there to speak on, uh, on our behalf as independent African nations. Uh, besides that, Africa has grown very much. Uh, we have our own vibrant economies. We have independent states now in Africa. And uh, Africa has continued to play a very important role on the global stage. Nearly 80 years on, uh, definitely that architecture is out of sync with the global realities, with the diversity that exists today, uh, with the active participation of Africa on the global scene. It is important that Africa's voice is heard. Africa is represented in the most important organ of the United Nations, which is the Security Council. That is why we are seeking to be there. So you've been making uh, the case and made it very strongly this week in New York that there should be two additional permanent representatives mm -hmm. from Africa on the Security Council and addi an additional two representatives. Is, how will those representatives on the Security Council really change the way that we're, because the African voice, the African continent needs to be represented to your point. How do you think it will change the way the Security Council operates? How will those voices make a difference? Well, we'll come with a new perspective. Uh, for example, Sierra Leone is, um, for the next two years, a member of the uh, Security Council but in the non-permanent category. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the issues that are being discussed at the, at the Security Council are things that we have had to go through. Uh, we've been through 11 years of a mm -hmm. bloody civil war. That's right. We are able to uh, uh, settle our differences and uh, we have moved on. Uh, the experiences that we gained from that uh, uh, exercise are things that we want to share with the world. Today we see a lot of nations uh, prefer the quick choice of going to war. Mm. And uh, after nearly so many years of, uh, of, 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 of atrocities, killing, destruction, uh, deepening the level of acrimony and the hostility uh, among or between them, they end up on the table. So we are saying to them, there is an important instrument, dialogue. Dialogue. And you're, you're, you're not only suggesting this dialogue exists at the United Nations and the Security Council, you've taken a significant leadership role across the continent around having this dialogue of what African voices should be on the global stage. H how are you finding it that, um, how is it going in that the, um, that so many African leaders are actually coming together in a more constructive way than maybe we see in Europe or the Middle East. Is, is Africa the new landscape for coalition building and creativity? Well, the lack of multilateralism in the global um, uh, uh, organizations is definitely negatively impacting our ability to respond to the issues that have arisen. Uh, what we are trying to do in Africa is to uh, come together. There is always strength in coming together. Yeah. Yes, and um, when you come together, you don't only share experiences, but also different perspectives. And so you come out with better solutions to certain critical issues. And that is why we are coalescing and coming around, and we hope that we can take this message 
to the bigger or global stage. So the more I spend time learning about Sierra Leone, the more excited I get, to be honest. It's a, it's, as you mentioned, it's a, it's a nation that's gone through a lot of difficulty and a lot of hardship, but it's a democracy. It's got an incredibly um, youthful population. Uh, you, have, you have decided to make your administration one of the youngest cabinets in the history of Sierra Leone. Why is youth so important to you, not only in terms of the population, but in terms of actually showing the leadership opportunities of those youth? Well, I'm trying to be more democratic. More than 60% of our population are youth. In a democratic setting, it is the majority that rule. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that since they've not been able to coalesce yet to take over from us, the youth, yeah. we have to, they have to be reflected in the governance structure. Mm -hmm. And we have to prepare the youth for the future. They are going to be the leaders. Uh, not even tomorrow. I want, I've made them the leaders today. In my cabinet, we have a lot of very young people, but these are responsible young people who are contributing. And by the way, I was involved uh, in leadership of my country when I was only in, uh, in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some of the uh, seminar issues that uh, Sierra Leone has had to deal with in terms of uh, the trajectory of the country, uh, democracy, the peace we are talking about, I played a critical role in bringing those. Yeah. So I was a youth, I must say, when I did all of those things. And Sierra Leone today is benefiting from those. So I, I believe that young people, if nurtured, if encouraged, mentored, they can provide leadership even today. And um, it is good that, and, and better that we give them the opportunity rather than stick. We, we are failing the world, the older people. Mm -hmm. I must say this. Uh, the chaos that is happening around the world, uh, the youth have expressed yeah. their desire. They don't like it, but they cannot stop it because we are playing around with their future. That's right. But they don't have the means. What I'm trying to do is to bring them closer one, not only to understand them, but to be part of the, the decision making. This is a, I, I, I hope leaders around the world are listening to this conversation because I think this is what youth are, are needing to hear, mm -hmm. right? They need to hear that they're being seen mm -hmm. and they're being heard and they need to understand that they're being invested in. You, you've, and your administration and, and what's happening in Sierra Leone is a deep investment in education. Mm -hmm. So. Explain to me why that's so important and how the educational systems of Sierra Leone are evolving to meet the needs of these youth. We, I normally say, my administration is a human capital development administration. The best you can do for the youth is to invest in them. How do they become better people? How are they going to be the leaders of tomorrow? Is to give them the best education. Africa, as you know, has been at the receiving end of all the revolutions, the first, um, second, mm -hmm. and third, the fourth um, uh, industrial revolution, revolution is on the brink if we are not in there already. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that uh, if we really invest in the education of our youth, we can prepare them to be in the middle of that industrial revolution and not at the receiving end. Africa cannot afford to be at the receiving end all the time when there is a huge industrial revolution. Yeah. We have been, and what I'm trying to do is to pre-position African youths, especially those in Sierra Leone, by investing in their education, uh, pre-positioning them, you know, so that they will be the leaders Mm -hmm. of the AI world that we are about to enter. So I, I, I know that your mother was a farmer. Correct. And agriculture is an enormous uh, engine in Sierra Leone as well in terms of creating opportunity and economic opportunity. Um, how, you mentioned industrial revolutions mm -hmm. and obviously technological revolutions. Mm -hmm. 
what's going on in the agricultural revolution in Sierra Leone that the, that the rest of Africa and the world should be paying attention to? Well, to the best of my knowledge, no country has succeeded um, in whatever they are doing without a successful agricultural revolution, food self-sufficiency. You must be able to reduce um, uh, food insecurity. The United States, the United Kingdom, all developed nations. Uh, to be a net food importer takes away from whatever resources you have. And it takes away from the jobs that you create when you can feed yourself. So um, my first time was dedicated mainly to education in all its forms. We are not out of the woods as of now, but we have laid a solid foundation. So with the little resources we have, we, are shift, we have shifted attention to agriculture because I want to deal with so many problems at one go. Yeah. One is unemployment, which agriculture takes care of. Mm -hmm. uh, two is revenue for the state. Through cash crops you know, and uh, exports, we'll be able to, to earn revenue. And uh, of course, we will reduce import, which means we will not be using the little that we have to send. Uh, we will be producing enough and to export and to get uh, 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 malnutrition. You know, so with all of these benefits, in addition to stimulating economic growth uh, around the country, this is why I chose agriculture, yeah. because it is going to deal with a multiplicity of uh, the challenges that we face today. We also fell from other point when um, 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 Ukraine was attacked. Mm -hmm. We have no business importing rice because we have mm -hmm. enough arable land, enough rainfall. So we need to put the policies in place and uh, the other import, uh, inputs in place to be able to produce our own food and to make money instead of uh, sending money out of so, so you're helping like, really reframe, even in this conversation for me, mm -hmm. a vision of Sierra Leone. There's people who in the United States perhaps have memories only of Sierra Leone as a country uh, torn apart by civil war. But now in a continent that has other areas of instability, Sierra Leone is an oasis of stability <coughs> and growth. What's the secret? Like what, 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 why, why is this nation now soaring in such, a, in such an optimistic way? Well, collectively as a nation, we have decided that we will put the past behind us. The war was a very bitter experience, and we have decided that we are going to surge forward with development. And um, to, to do this, you need leadership. What I have done is to um, I'm, 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 change collectively with my cabinet, we, we have changed the narrative. Mm -hmm. 10 years ago, we were a subject at the uh, Security Council. Last month, we presided over the Security Council. Wow. Yes. That's awesome. Uh, for, for, for some of the things we are doing are quite breathtaking. I mean, for our women in Suradion, we have freed up the space for them. Now, um, um, they can be part of leadership. We have reduced maternal mortality rate by 60 whopping percent wow. in just uh, five years. So what we are doing is to invest in the human capacity, to develop the human capacity, because uh, normally when you talk about Syria, to a lot of uh, people around the world, they will tell you about uh, mineral wealth, gold, mm -hmm. diamond, bauxite, rutile, right. you know, they list Natural wealth, yeah, yeah. But I told them when I came, yes, that is important. The most important resource, uh, resources we have are our human beings. Yeah. Let's invest in them and we will see the benefit of it. So this is why Sierra Leone is uh, punching way above its weight, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, the, you know uh, in every walk of uh, life, every human endeavor, because uh, for the past uh, six years, with all the struggles that are going on around the world, we have stayed focused on lifting our country, changing the narrative, and to be part of the committee of nations to decide on the security and stability of the world, bringing our example to the fore.
So leadership starts at the top, and I'm really energized listening to you because it's very clear that the leadership in Sierra Leone, um, represented by you, is strong. When you're looking across not just only your country, but the entire continent, what message do you have for young leaders who were like you, maybe, and in in youth emissaries are just beginning to think about how they want to lead? What advice do you have for them when they look forward at the next 50, 80 years of transforming their continent, their country, their community? Well, Africa has a lot of potentials, but we've not been able to tap into that potential. Um, we have challenges, and these challenges we can actually translate into or transform into opportunities. So my appeal to the young people of Africa is that no one is going to leave their own continent to come and solve our problems. So we are going to solve our own problems, and that is why whenever I'm in the diaspora, like I'm here, mm -hmm. I invite Africans to go back because they've acquired the skills and networks that are quite pertinent to us, to what we want to do on the, con uh, on the continent. In that regard, you, we want them to go back and use these connections, the expertise they have, whatever that is good from the West, so that we can bring that to bear on the situation in Africa. We have to change Africa. Yeah. If you have one, one thing to tell us to keep <coughs> optimistic about, about Africa, what, is, what should we stay optimistic about with both the continent and Sierra Leone? What makes you optimistic? I believe that we have on the continent what it takes not only to provide food for the whole world, but very soon we could be making a trillion per year from what is left because Africa has 60% six, of uh, arable land that is left in the world. And with the sunshine, ample sunshine, rainfall, we, should be, we can feed the world. We also have gone through so much in the past that we have acquired quite a lot of experience we can bring that to bear on the situation in a world that is distracted with so many conflicts around the world. We still have our, our challenges out there, but there is so much we can do. So I would appeal not only to the leaders, but to the youth to believe that Africa is the place and Africa is the last frontier in terms of opportunities, and we have to go unlock uh, 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 the potential that is in Africa. No one, don't stay here and expect that some other people are going to unlock it. They will unlock it for themselves. Get back home, unlock it, yeah. and share it with the world. Well, Mr. President, I know you have a very busy week here mm -hmm. at the UN General Assembly in New York. I appreciate you immensely for taking the time to speak to us at Forbes and really speak to the whole world about what's happening in Sierra Leone. It's an exceptionally exciting time for your country. I, I can see it's an exceptionally exciting time for you, and we're proud to be your allies in making sure your stories get told. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.